Hey guys, welcome back to Clownfish TV. This is Neon. I am here with Geeky Sparkles. Hello. And we're going to talk about AI because it's getting scary good and uh, it's coming for Hollywood pretty quick, pretty quickly. Um, so OpenAI released videos earlier today show, yeah. showing their new video creation tool. So you thought AI images were scary good. You thought some writing was scary good. It's doing full video now it's doing pixar quality animation well that's now. animation but like even the, the the scenes i mean there are problems with the scenes but you know this is the first pass right so let's let's talk about this we're going to talk about uh everything going on with hollywood and ai and how rightfully afraid i mean i'm gonna be honest you, if you're working in hollywood you should be afraid because the ai eventually is going to be able to do a lot of at least the pre-visual stuff it might not be the finished product yet but it's eventually going to get there. I mean, imagine being able to do 3D animation without actually having to render anything yourself. You're just like, hey. Oh, yeah, here's a prompt. Animated scene features a close-up of a short, fluffy monster kneeling beside a melted red, can red candle. Art styles of 3D and realistic with a focus on lighting and texture. Yeah. The mood of the painting is one of wonder and curiosity. I mean, this is freakishly good. And this is the, the early attempts, right? So we'll talk about that. We're going to talk about publishers now uh, trying to wheel and deal with AI because we're seeing, especially with Google, what is killing blog traffic is the fact that Google now gives you an AI answer at the top of the page. Bing is doing it too. Yeah. And then that we were talking about this before where they were basically offering cash yeah. if they could use the whole back catalog of different pub publications to try to train their AI. Yeah, and these publishers, they're desperate for money. They're looking, and again, these are mostly business people, finance people, they're not creatives. They're looking at the long-term viability of these publications they own, and they're probably like, you know what? We'll take the money, whatever, because we're not gonna be in business in five years, you know? So mm -hmm. just, you might as well cash out now. And that's what I think a lot of people are gonna do. I think a lot of Hollywood studios and possibly pre, you know, uh, visual uh, VFX houses, previs houses, whatever, people working in special effects, uh, they might just cash out. They might just say, hey, you know what? Just scrape our content or whatever, because- How do they will? I think, I, I, I don't know. I, think, I don't know. I think it's a big enough threat. If it's a big enough threat, people with money, something will get changed. Well, yeah. They don't people... care if it's a little guy, but if it's gonna threaten that. <laughs> Because eventually, yeah, like you said, you know, they'll they'll eat you last. They're they're right. gonna and eat you, but they'll eat you. Or last. they'll find ways to change the rules that they can do it, and they get copyrighted. They can copyright their work and everything else, but other people can't or something. Well, but it just, I don't know. It's just, it is scary. Well, look at what's going on with Taylor Swift. So, like, all these people get their content scraped daily, right? Mm -hmm. Writers and artists and whatever. They don't even bad an eye, but Taylor Swift, you make some porn out of Taylor Swift. Uh-huh, something they take want, it down, yeah. Yeah, and they want to change all the all the rules because there's a lot of money in Taylor Swift, right? Um, so anyway, let's uh, let's talk about this. Uh, it's so weird. It's just so weird to see how fast it's all moving. Before we get into it any further, please subscribe for more pop culture, news views, and rants. Guys, get woohoo if you do. Woohoo. Um, so I guess we'll start with this. We'll start with the video first. Um, I actually was was made aware of this by a friend of mine, Black Sage D, on Twitter, who sent is like, have you seen this yet? I'm like, no, I missed this. And I'm like, oh my God. You know, so let's go out to the page. It's called Sora. And uh, it's creating video from prompts, just like you'd create a photograph, except it's creating actual video. And you're thinking, well, it can't be that good, right? It can't be that well, good, the right? Back, oh, that's what you mask. It was like the old white. We saw other ones that didn't look, they didn't look as good. Yeah, wow. I mean, it varies, but like, damn. I mean, again, this is early. This is early. Where is this going to be in two years, five years, 10 years? This looks like it was shot with a camera. I mean, it probably was shot with a camera and then they just, <laughs> just added AI crap to it. But you know what I'm Some saying? Some parts are like video game cutscenes. It just depends. They, it depends on what it is. Um, I mean, it's it, this is what, what blew my mind, uh, being into animation stuff, is this is going to be the future of 3D animation. You're going to be able to... I mean, eventually you'll probably be able to input your characters in and be like, okay, take this character and make this character do these things in this scene. And just look at all the animation jobs that would be eliminated just by this. Cause you have mm -hmm. people that just make fur. You have people that just do flame effects. You have Even people... the wax is melting. Yeah. Yeah. And it's pretty convincing. I mean, this well, was, I mean, it doesn't really move much. But... No, but just think 
I thought it was hand. I can't figure that out. I think it's wax out. on his hand. I think that's what it's supposed to be. I was like, I try to figure that out. But it's just, it's it's freakish. Like here's uh, under the sea. Here we've got. It was like a paper craft. Yeah. Under the sea. Yeah. Yeah. Prompt. Gorgeously rendered paper craft world of coral reef with colorful fish and sea creatures. And this looks like a Netsy commercial or something. Close up shot of Victoria Crown Pigeon. Like. The scary thing about this, too, photorealistic close-up of two pirate ships battling each other as they sail inside a cup of coffee. That one doesn't look too believable to me. No. That looks pretty fake. Sorry. It's like the Tidy Bowl Man. <laughs> this looks pretty bad. It looks like they got they took, like, stock footage from, from like, Shutterstock, and then they just kind of spliced in models. But, you know, it's not... Because I saw some early attempts at doing video. I think they had, like... Will Smith eating stuff, or whatever. And it was like the, the faces, like the eyes, when he'd move his head, they wouldn't line up right. And everything looked really distorted. It looked like a bunch of really funky images just, but this looks like it actually was a render. Well, this doesn't look, this one isn't very good. This one isn't a good. No, example. but it's, this is, this is a taste of things to come. Uh, a man is 20 sitting on a piece of, uh, on a piece of cloud reading a book. And again, they could have gotten this from another source. Basically, this looks like a little house in the prairie. That one person just disappeared to the ground wait where wait, go back go back go back okay there's a person watch on on the left okay um keep playing like they just disappear into the ground like up here wait where is it at there was a person or an animal or something watch it just disappears into the ground there oh See my it? god there's an animal i thought it was a person yeah it's like a horse or something wait hold on right here yeah, you're looking right here into the ground oh i'm dead <laughs> That horse has two legs. Wait, this horse has two legs. Okay, look, it's it's not perfect. <laughs> it's got two legs and like a schlong or something. I don't know what's going on there. It's the retarded running horse. Do you remember that one? No. You don't remember that meme? No. Okay, that's that's what it's literally called. Google that. And it's a two-legged horse. And it plays the music. It's like... No, okay. No, I'll take your word for it. What else, what else is here? Okay. We got uh, a close-up view of a glass sphere that has a Zen garden, and there's a small dwarf in the sphere. Like, this looks like it could be a commercial. And I... Uh, Energizer kangaroo. Cartoon kangaroo disco dancing. And again, I don't know if they've swiped this from other places. A lot of it looks like stock footage has been tweaked. But the fact that they can do this now, and it's just starting... Bamboo forest growing with tiny red pandas running around. Again, this looks like it could be a commercial. They, are they missing their back legs? They, they are. Okay. <laughs> okay, so it's not perfect, okay? It's it's not perfect. I'm not saying it's perfect. Oh I'm saying it's scary. So what's the next one? I, scary how good it is at this it point. plays horror movies. Okay, that would be easy enough to do. You just grab a clips of horror movies. I mean, that wouldn't be hard. Yeah. This is a 3D animation of a small... Round, fluffy creature with big, expressive eyes exploring a vibrant, enchanted forest. The creature, whimsical blend of rabbit and squirrel, has holy props. I'm not reading all this. Soft blue fur. But again, how long would it have taken an animator to... How many fingers do they have? Would it have taken an animator to do this? And you better believe, a company like Disney, they're looking at this like... Oh, oh yeah. yeah. I got, who can I fire to save money? Yeah, or we can take this and use this as a, as a base, and then we can tweak it later. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And that's how they're going to use it. Or, Hey, we'll just have this, this generate, you know, a scene for us. And then we'll just like trace over it or something. Yeah. Or use it as a basis. Yeah. And that's why things can, that happen. looks like a video game cut scene. Yeah. Cars. That was actually pretty interesting. That just looks like stock footage. I mean, this is just looks like stock footage. Um, here's a large orange octopus resting upon the ocean floor, uh, floor here with a crab or something. I don't know. Uh, Flock of paper airplanes. That's the intro. Yeah, that was that's cool. Neat. That is really cool. That's actually, actually. really cool. Um, oh, I thought I said a cat oh, that waking one, up. That woman does not look real. Sorry. Demon owner. Yeah, no. But uh, birds. Is there anything more interesting than... Yeah, it's just... I, I don't know, guys. It's, it's not going anywhere. That's not going anywhere. So this is going to scare the hell out of Hollywood. Oh, I'm sure it no, Well, it depends. It's going to scare the hell out of people who are the lower people, like the you know, animators and things like that, some of the actors and stuff. It's going to be like, oh, ho, ho, to people like Bob Iger and company who are like, we can just 
you know, crank out shit and get to keep all the money. That's exactly what's going to happen there. Or, you know, what, what's more than likely going to happen. It's kind of like what's going on with journalism right now is you're going to have a skeleton crew overseeing a bot farm. Mm-hmm. I mean, you're going to always have to have a human operator, I guess for now, but you know, they're going to be overseeing a bot farm basically. Um, so here, you know, sound engineers, voice actors, and concept artists stood at the forefront of that displacement, according to the study, for who's going to be displaced by AI, 204,000 positions. In the next three years. In the next three, year, three years. Three years. In I th- think it's going to be more than that. In three personally. years, over 200,000 people, creative people, are going to be out of work. Visual effects and other post-production work also cited as particularly vulnerable. We saw that it's destroyed journalism, basically, because, again, you know, uh, Google can just give you a snippet of an answer that right. you're and looking then, for. And then, you know, these pe- these places want to just buy out catalogs of publishing houses and stuff to train their AI to be the next journalists. And that's great because, you know, the, the companies are going to take the money and run, but some of them are actually trying to stand up against it for, you know, to keep their people in journalism because it's like, it's not the same thing. But unless they're all standing together saying no, if some people are agreeing to it, then they're still going to get this place. It's just going to take a little longer. Yeah, um, this is uh, Carla Ortiz. She worked on Marvel titles. She said, this is a clear alarm to the unions and professionals who are in crew in any capacity. This shows the tech is here to compete with us. This is only the first step. Uh, yeah, no. And you'd better believe I, studios will definitely boot you to keep the money. That's so here's where I'm torn on it because I'm I'm like, OK, the technology is here. We're going to have to learn to live with it. Right. Flip side is you guys thought going on strike was going to spare you. And the first thing that SAG after did when they had the opportunity was strike a deal to be able to sell people's voices. Yeah. Well, you know what I'm saying? Like, what did you strike for? And they're talking about the different things that are wrong with the videos. Yes. I'm hundred percent agreeing with you. The videos are for not perfect for now, for now. For um, now. look at where AI art was two or three years ago. Look at where it is now. Like now, uh, if you're good at prompt writing, and you give it enough time, it's indistinguishable from hand-drawn art. And it is scary. I mean, I'm not going to lie. It, it, it's, it's scary. I mean, it's cool, but it's like, wow, that's really the, uh, neat. And then you're like, oh, shit, everything I do could totally be yep. replaced. You know, the, like, seriously. It, 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 I, I, and I understand, because I that was the first thing I thought was concept art and uh, pre-visualization. It's uh, probably not... It's not quite there yet for a finished product, but if you want like, oh, give me a panoramic, you know, uh, uh, skyline and, you know, we're just like, instead of going out and hiring like a, you know, helicopter crew or something to film it, you can just have it like render this scene and Mm -hmm. then, uh, you know, maybe go over it with, with CGI or something. And it's not there yet for the finished product, but for pre-visualization, it absolutely is there. Because you can say, hey, hey, show me the Hulk uh, punching a spaceship or something, mm-hmm. you know, and here's here's how I want it to look and here's how it should be framed. And eventually you'll be able to probably take storyboards and just plug the storyboards in and be like, turn this into a movie. Show me Captain Marvel being good. <laughs> show me She-Hulk being good. Well, that's where that's where it's going to go. Eventually what's going to happen I think it's going to just be like Star Trek with the holodeck. I think you're going to be able to program AI to generate a movie a la carte. Well, did you see that one of the um, Imagineers was getting, you know, recognition, I guess some kind of, you know, Hall of Fame position or something because they developed, developed a floor that ro- rolls around like a holodeck that you'd be able to walk on it and things like oh, that. Oh, wow. Yeah. No, I hadn't seen that. So then eventually we're going to blend the two technologies. We're going to have the AI, you know, spinning up virtual worlds that we'll be able to. the problem is, is it's not going to be used for good. You know, I mean, nothing. where is the line drawn? <laughs> is. Where are you going to put people into, into simulations where they, you know, don't know they're in a simulation? You know what I mean? And you could do like, there's so much damage. This, this is all so running man All the man-esque. science fiction, all, all the science fiction movies all at once. We're going to be looking Yeah, at. it's like Running Man and all that coming to Oh, the us. Running Man is, that's the one that scares me because I'm like, you know, he got framed with, with fake footage. And I'm like, that that could happen now. They mm-hmm. could just be like, I mean, you're going to have to get damn good at telling the difference between real footage and fake footage because you could say, hey, oh, here's a video of my wife, you know, shooting her boyfriend or something. Well, or the I'm, boyfriend's still alive. Clearly she didn't. Okay. Yeah, but you know what I'm saying? Like you could frame somebody for murder. Yeah. Easily. Uh, you know, when it gets to that point. And it's not, again, it's not there yet. 
it will be there a hell of a lot faster than you think. Um, so this is, uh, this is this Reed Southern who worked on Transformers. Um, he said, I've heard a lot of people say they're leaving film. I've been thinking of where I can pivot to if I can't make a living out of this anymore. They said, whereas most AI video generators are limited by the length of videos they can mm -hmm. produce, which often have issues with extra right. limbs or whatever, uh, Sora, which is what they're calling it, appears to come close to generating content of up to a minute long that maintains visual quality and consistency while adhering to users' prompts. It allows for the switching of shots, which includes close-ups, tracking, and aerial, and the changing of shot composition. So yeah, there's some weird stuff. And they said there's some weird stuff. Uh, OpenAI said in the blog announcing the tool, may struggle with accurate, accurately simulating the physics of a complex scene. It may not understand specific instances of cause and effect. Yet, look at 3D animation 30 years ago. Well, it might not understand it yet, but it also could be a matter of people just get better at prompts. Yeah. Well, that's just it. You have to be, you can get some damn good stuff out of AI. If you know how to write a prompt, you have to be very specific. You have to tell it exactly what you don't want, you know, and cause it's going to be very literal, but, um, yeah. Well, here, the company did not disclose the material used to train the systems, which I think is a problem. They said, oh, cause it's a maintaining competitive advantage. You no, know, it sounds like you're trying to hide where you got it from. Yeah, it looks like Shutterstock stock footage to me. I'm, I'm looking at that and I'm like, these look like a lot of things. Um, that Shutterstock would have, you know what I'm saying? Just tweet. You don't know that. But I don't know that, but if I had to guess, if I had to guess, I would say that's what's going on. But um, so anyway, real quick, we'll talk here about this uh, media mogul uh, debacle here with AI, because a lot of people are just going to take the money and run. And they're going to say, hey, you know what? You pay us. That's more money than we're going to make in advertising, but you pay us for our content and you can scrape it. And we're going to, this is going to be our exit strategy because mm -hmm. these, these blogs and these, these news outlets that we work for, it doesn't make any money. Yeah. And there's some that are staying against it, but unless you're all united, you know, they're just going to, they'll scrape other people and still get ahead, you know? Yep. Um, so they talked about how local news has been decimated. Uh, they said there are, uh, you know, firms that own um, or AI. artificial firms own AI. Their business model is pr predicated on scraping and sucking information and content from sources like trusted sources like the New York Times, the Wall Street Journal and the New Yorker without properly compensating those news organizations. Um, they said their output could compete with our entire industry, which is why it's an existential threat. It is because these machines can spit out an article that a lot of humans couldn't tell the difference yeah, and they can do it in seconds. Right. I don't blame them. I'd be, you know, it's, it's very concerning. So publishers and CEOs across the industry agree AI is an existential threat to the future of journalism. Well, blow one was you stop being journalists and you start, well, that's being, true. you know, chasing, chasing clickbait. But uh, anyway, their businesses have spent the past year wrestling with a conundrum and could deal with the AI players or fight it out in court. Do the CEOs and publishers of these trusted news brands prefer paying journalist salaries or attorney fees? The core was our concern around protecting intellectual property rights, said uh, Condé Nast CEO, and they just laid a bunch of people off. So that's the thing. They're going to look at, like, is it worth it? Is it even worth it? Like, th if this is where it's going, is it worth paying people $150,000 a year to write articles slowly that nobody's going to read? Or can we just take a check from Google or Bing or whatever, you know, Microsoft and just sell our shit and just get a cut of that. Hopefully. Um, yeah. So, uh, this person, this is the guy who owns a business insider in Politico. He embarked on what would be a six month process to ink a deal with open AI for its content to train their products. We want to explore the opportunities of AI powered journalism to bring quality societal relevance and business model, the business model of journalism to the next level. No, you just want the money. Y he wants to cash out. And you want to you know, use AI because it's cheaper. However, I, I, what I don't understand is if AI has to be trained yes. on, you know, things and stuff happens, it, the, the, I'm just saying eventually you're going to run out of stuff that you can copy. Like unless other people are writing about it, it has nothing they can copy from. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, they're trying to come up with like revenue splits and stuff like that. Google is. But I look, at the end of the day, if the machine can do it better, it, just because you have a deal with one AI company doesn't mean the other one's going to cut a deal with you. You know what I'm saying? They're, they're going to just keep scraping and learning. And they might cut a deal with some people, but then it's like, okay, cool. We'll pay for like the New York Times or something like that. But we're going to scrape you know, thousands of other blogs. We're not going to pay them because it's not worth it. Well, I think it's more, I think that they want the big ones. But they're, unless they stand together to fight it, 
some people are still going to get paid, others aren't, and it's, they're still going to get what they want. Well, yeah, and this is like the perfect storm because these outlets are hard up for cash. So an immediate deal looks pretty damn good. Like, hey, just, you know, we'll pay you. We're going to scrape your shit, but we're going to pay you for it, something, and it's better than what you're making now. And that might have been the point. I mean, that might actually be the point. It might be that Google is basically just trying to, you know, get these guys to agree to whatever. I don't know. I don't know. It's pretty scary out there. But uh, a lot of jobs are going to be lost, guys. Uh, it is what it is. I don't know what else to, to say at this point. It's scary how good it's getting, how quickly it's getting it. And when you've got people in Hollywood even being like, yeah, we might not have a job in three years. Yeah, but I'm scared beyond, you know, people's jobs. I'm scared beyond, like, what are they going to be using this for? Yeah. You know, that's what is even more scary. And I, and I think it, I don't know. I don't think it should, I think there should be guidelines, but you know, people aren't always going to obey those. Well, that's, that's the truth. That's the truth. So we're going to wrap this one up. Yeah. All right, guys, uh, please subscribe for more pop culture news, views, and rants, and we'll talk later. Bye.